Even if you are just a beginner, by the end of this tutorial, you have this beautiful car animation. Add a plane, scale it, and then add a good road texture on it. You can get all these texture and objects from link in description. It will be completely free, but if you are willing to pay, you can always join my Patreon. You will get much more value there. Go to edit mode, select all with shift plus A, and then press U and select unwrap. Add an area light in the scene for visibility. Now add an array modifier to the road and extend it by a lot. Also scale our scene light. Increase its strength so that the road gets visible again. Append or import the car model into the scene. Also, do not forget to save the file. Now scale the road according to the car. Select the road and go to edit mode. Select this edge, extrude it, then press L to select it. Now press P and choose selection to separate it. This will make it a separate object and it is now our footpath. Select the footpath, select the top face and extrude it upwards. Now add a mirror modifier to mirror to the other side. Choose road as object. Now here I am looking at the reference photos to get an idea. Select the footpath, tab into edit mode, add a loop cut in the middle and slide it to here. Press shift plus D to duplicate, then press P and choose selection to make it separate object. Select it, go to edit mode and extrude it upwards. Now press control plus R to add a loop cut and slide it top. Select this face and extrude it. Enable clipping and mirror modifier so we can attach the extruded faces at top. Select the top face and move them upwards a little bit. Select this corner edge and press control plus B and bevel it. Now shade the tunnel auto smooth. Add a cube in the scene, move it to above and scale it to give pillar like shape. Move it at the starting of tunnel. Add an array modifier to the pillar object and make multiple instances of it. Give a little bit of space in between every pillar through the modifier. I tried giving it a mission shader to make them look like big lights, but it was not looking good. So I just added a simple concrete shader to it. Add a new cube in the scene scale it and place it on the edge of footpath. Scale it down again and move it to the starting. Go to edit mode, select this face and move it to make it longer. Also add a loop cut in the middle. Select these top edges and bevel them. Select these edges also and bevel them. Shade it auto smooth. Add an array modifier to it, adjust the numbers of axes and make multiple iterations of it. But before that, select these faces, add a new material and assign them. Make the material black and increase roughness to 1.0. Add a new material again and assign it to these faces. Make one material pure white and with roughness of one, and make other one pure black with roughness of one also. Now use the array modifier to extend it to the end. Add a mirror modifier to it to duplicate to the other side of road. Download a simple road sign arrow image. We are gonna need it. You can get all these images from link in description for free. Now add a plane in the scene, rotate it and move it to side. Scale it down, then go to shading tab. Give it a new material and then go to the folder where you save the downloaded image. Drag the image here. Connect it to base color. Now rotate the plane sideway to make the arrow point in front. Scale the plane down and go to UV editing tab. Now adjust the UVs of sign. Match it with all the corners. Now select the sign, place it here. Go to edit mode and extrude it to give it a bit of thickness. Attach the sign to the wall. Now use an array modifier to duplicate it multiple times. Add a mirror modifier to mirror the signs and choose road as mirror object in the modifier. Now instead of black color, I gave this footpath texture to our footpath. It looks much better now. You can add a texture of your choice. I imported this barrier in the scene. It is just a cube extruded and scaled with a concrete texture on it. Place it on the corner like this. Use an array modifier to duplicate it multiple times. Also use a mirror modifier on it. Add a path curve in the scene. Move it upwards and go to edit mode. 
Now select these corner vertices and extrude them down by pressing E and then Z. Select these top vertices and subdivide them. Select these side vertices also and subdivide them two to three times. Select the bottom two vertices and extrude them one time. Now enable vertex snapping, then select this vertex, extrude it and use vertex snapping to snap it to this one. Now select these top vertices and shift D to duplicate them. Press forward slash and then duplicate them individually. I was not able to find any way to separate them, otherwise I would use the same vertices. If you know any simpler way, please let me know in the comments. Now press L over this yellow line carefully to select the previous vertices and delete them. Select all these new ones and extrude them up to here. Go to Object Mode, then go to Curve Properties. Then increase the Depth of Curve under Bevel of Geometry tab. Now place it on the top of white and black barrier we created earlier. Scale it down and adjust its place. Use an array modifier to duplicate it multiple times. Also use a mirror modifier to duplicate on the other side. Increase the iterations of Array Modifier on every object to make the tunnel much longer. Now adjust your view in the scene. Add a camera and press Ctrl plus Shift plus zero to snap the camera to view. Now adjust the position of camera if needed. This barrier was coming in the view, so I removed it from one side by deleting the mirror modifier and moving it to the other side. Adjust the position of car, so it is just on the road. Decrease the focal length to 35 so we can capture more. Now adjust the camera again. Increase the size and strength of our scene light. Also decrease the spread amount of light. Add a cube in the scene, scale it in X axis and scale it down in Z axis. Now scale down to make it smaller. Apply the scale to this cube, go to edit mode and select all the side and top edges. Bevel these edges. Now shade it auto smooth. Select this bottom face and inset it. Now extrude backwards. Add a new material to the light and assign it to the interface. Then press Ctrl plus I in the viewport and assign a new material slot to these faces. Give a white shiny material to top and a glowing material to interface by increase emission strength. Now place this on the wall of tunnel, just above the arrow sign. Rotate it 90 degrees to make it face forward. Now duplicate the light and place it under like I am doing. This will light up our arrow sign. Select both and press Ctrl plus J to join them. Now use an array modifier to duplicate it multiple times. You can try changing the emission to different color, but I think white with a little bit of blue or yellow tint look best here. Also use a mirror modifier after array modifier to duplicate it the lights to other side. I render a photo of scene and I think that arrows were too big, so I decided to make them smaller and have a little bit more space between them. 
I scaled down the arrow sign and used a ray modifier to have more space between them. Now it looks much better to me. Now let's animate the car. Select the camera, then select the body of car. Press Ctrl P and choose object. This will parent the camera to the car, and now our camera will move with the car. Move the car to the starting of tunnel, but make sure that black void is not visible in the camera. Only the tunnel should be. Now select the car rig and go to pose mode. Press N to open side menu. Go to rig a car add in properties and enable this wheels on Y axis option. This is very important. Otherwise your car wheels will not rotate. Select the bottom car bone and add a keyframe. Now go to frame 250. Select the car bone again, move it in front and add a keyframe. Now play the animation and your car should move now. Render an image and adjust the light if needed. As you have probably noticed that even though our car is moving, but we do not see that happening in the render. It is because there is no motion blur in the scene. Go to Render Properties and check mark it to enable it. Now you can see it looks much more realistic. Now here I am adding more keyframes and realistic movements to the car like weight and momentum. I will speed up the process to make it less boring, but it will not be super fast, so if you want to follow it, you can do it. You can check out this video if your render time is too slow. It will help you render much faster on low-end PC.